How do you feel about cybersecurity compliance? Do you think it's the best thing ever? Do you think it's just about avoiding fines? In this video, we're going to discuss the most common misconceptions that people have when it comes to cybersecurity compliance. Before we get into the rest of the content, I want to take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor, Vanta. Whether you're starting or scaling your company's security program, demonstrating top-notch security practices and establishing trust is more important than ever. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Managing compliance for one standard, let alone multiple, can be complex, but one of the features that I personally love about Vanta is that it allows you to see everything that matters in one location to help keep you informed about the status of your security and compliance program. Plus, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center all powered by Vanta AI. Over 7,000 global companies like Alassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. It really says something that so many companies are relying on Vanta. You can check out Vanta yourself by visiting vanta.com slash John. And just for being a part of my audience, they're going to give you $1,000 off Vanta. That's vanta.com forward slash John for $1,000 off Vanta. Big thank you to Vanta for sponsoring today's video. Now, as we start diving into the list, I want you to really think about each misconception and how you might counter the objection if you had to face it in your job. Or if you aren't a fan of compliance, Consider the misconceptions that we discuss and let me know at the end of the video if your perspective is any different. Okay, let's do this. Misconception number one, compliance equals security. There's people out there that believe being compliant means you're fully secure. Is that true though? The reality is that compliance sets a minimum standard for security practices, but it doesn't guarantee comprehensive protection against all threats. Security requires continuous improvement and adaptation beyond compliance requirements if you want to truly be secure. Good comparison to make here is with the government. The government makes laws that give structure and some limited restrictions, but they're flexible enough that you can make them work for your situation without violating them. Compliance is the same way, where it's essentially a foundation for you to apply in your security and compliance program, but it's rarely enough to satisfy the needs of your specific situation. Misconception number two, compliance is a one-time event. If you think that once you achieve compliance, you're done, you need to think again. Compliance is an ongoing process that requires regular updates, monitoring, and audits to ensure continued adherence to regulations and to adapt to new threats. Something that I always remind people of is just because something isn't vulnerable today, like a software application, that doesn't mean it's not going to be vulnerable tomorrow. New hacker techniques and vulnerabilities are discovered all the time, and if you aren't keeping track of things, you'll find yourself with an extremely vulnerable network in no time. Misconception number three, compliance is only about avoiding fines. I want you to go ahead and raise your hand if you think the main goal of compliance is to avoid penalties and fines. The truth is that while avoiding fines is important, the primary goal of compliance is to protect sensitive data, ensure business continuity, and build trust with customers and partners. I'll let you in on a little secret. Companies don't do everything that they need so they don't get fined. Much of what we do in security and compliance is a cost-benefit trade-off, but the other things that I just mentioned might be more important if they conflict with each other. That being said, compliance certainly helps achieve many of those items. Misconception number four, compliance is the IT department's responsibility. Thinking that only the IT department needs to worry about compliance is far from the truth. Compliance is an organization-wide responsibility involving all departments, including HR, legal, and executive leadership. Everyone must be aware of and adhere to compliance policies. Something that new professionals don't realize is that audits routinely require a variety of staff members from around the organization to get interviewed about their processes to verify compliance. Especially in today's world, security is everybody's responsibility. Misconception number five, all compliance standards are the same. This comes from people assuming that compliance standards are uniform across all industries. In reality, compliance requirements can vary across different industries. For example, healthcare has to comply with HIPAA, while financial services must adhere to PCI DSS and SOX. These are just a few examples of the many compliance requirements that exist, but keep in mind that not everything is the same. Misconception number six, compliance means using the latest technologies. Some people are under the impression that by having the latest cybersecurity technology, that you're definitely compliant. The reality is that compliance involves a combination of technology, processes, and people. Simply having the latest technology doesn't guarantee compliance if policies and employee practices are not aligned with regulatory requirements. 
One really good example is with Amazon Web Services or AWS. If you aren't familiar with AWS, it's one of the largest and most popular cloud service providers available today. Anyways, AWS has amazing service offerings and has a page full of compliance certifications that can be achieved in the cloud. That said, if you aren't configuring the services properly, then although AWS itself is compliant, your environment might not be. Misconception number seven, compliance is only about the technical controls. Beginners especially tend to believe that compliance is focused solely on technical security controls. Compliance is not just focused on technical security controls, and it also includes administrative controls, so things like policies and procedures, and physical controls like secure access to facilities. Compliance requires a comprehensive approach, and you'll see this if you start looking into some of the standards like ISO 27001 and NIST Risk Management Framework, or RMF. We see this relationship and comprehensive requirement increasing in importance as security and compliance becomes more of a focus at the executive leadership level within organizations. Misconception number eight, once compliant, always compliant. If you achieve compliance at your organization, does that mean that you remain compliant indefinitely? Of course not. Compliance requirements evolve and organizations must regularly review and update their practices to stay compliant. I recommend going to research any major compliance framework like ISO 27001, NIST RMF, or PCI, and you'll see different versions or revision numbers, and that's because things change in these standards. Changes in the organization or its environment can also affect compliance status. If you were only using AWS, for example, for your cloud infrastructure, and then you decided to go to Google's cloud environment called GCP, you would have to account for that and make sure the environment is compliant. Misconception number nine, compliance stifles innovation. We see this a lot with traditional developers and people who are stuck in their ways, but this is the idea that compliance hinders an organization's ability to innovate. If you properly integrate compliance, it can actually enhance security and operational efficiency, allowing for more secure innovation. It ensures that new developments are built with security in mind from the start. We really see this done well in DevOps environments where there's essentially checks along the way. If you've ever heard of the waterfall method from a long time ago, essentially things like software were developed in stages. So you had stages, for example, like Git requirements, the design, the development, testing, deployment, and maintenance. What we found with this older model is that the product or service would either get completely developed or very close to being completely developed throughout these stages. And then at the very end, we'd end up with this massive list of security things that had to get done. This would make things very expensive if you had to do much redesign. Additionally, another concern is that compliance people would often be the no people, meaning that they would say no because it violates a compliance requirement. Compliance standards actually offer quite a bit of flexibility in how they're implemented and the things that are allowed while still remaining compliant. Additionally, if an organization is willing to accept a risk, in most cases, regardless of the potential repercussions, it will not automatically result in non-compliance. Misconception number 10. Compliance guarantees zero data breaches. Is it true that if you're compliant, you won't experience any data breaches? Definitely not. Being compliant will certainly reduce risk and the likelihood of a data breach, but it doesn't always eliminate it entirely. Organizations must remain vigilant and proactive in their security efforts beyond compliance to mitigate threats effectively or at least reduce the likelihood of them being successful. In the world of compliance and security, we make risk-based decisions and sometimes that leaves residual risk or leftover risk once we've implemented controls or taken action. Look, at the end of the day, we only have so much budget and so many resources to devote to our efforts. So we prioritize where we invest based on risk to give us the best chance to achieve our business objectives. Question of the day, which of these misconceptions have you heard before? Are any of them new to you? Let me know down in the comment section below. Remember, understanding these misconceptions helps organizations take a more realistic and proactive approach to cybersecurity compliance. It's about creating a culture of security that flows throughout the entire organization beyond just meeting regulatory requirements. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.